This is part 5 of a review of rational functions covering AP Precalculus topics 1.7 through 1.11. If you missed part 4, you can either click the link in the upper right hand corner or find the link in the description. In this video we will practice some multiple choice questions. If you appreciate this content, please show it by hitting the like button. Number 39, the graph of the rational function f is shown above. Which of the following could be an expression for f of x? Let's build our own expression for f of x and then compare that to the answer choices. I see that we have a hole at x equals 5. That tells us that we have a factor of x minus 5 in the denominator that cancels out with another factor in the numerator. We may need the fact that y, the y value of the whole is 2 later. So let's record that as well. We see that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. That means we have a factor of x minus 2 in the denominator that does not cancel out with anything. We see that f of x has a 0 of x equals negative 1. It's the uh, x value of the x-intercept. So a 0, x equals negative 1, means a factor of x plus 1 in the numerator that does not cancel out with anything. Finally, we see there is a horizontal asymptote, y equals 1. We get a horizontal asymptote that is a constant when the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same, and in that case, the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the leading coefficients. So, using what we have so far, the degree of the numerator is x squared, x times x. The degree of the denominator is also x squared. And uh, the leading coefficients are 1. There are no numbers in the front, so they must be 1s, which would give us uh, a ratio of 1 over 1, that's y equals 1. So as it is, we are getting a horizontal asymptote y equals 1. So this fits all of the things that we observe uh, with the possible exception of a y value of the whole of y equals 2. But let's go ahead and look down at the options and see how many we can eliminate with uh, what we have made so far. There is only one option that matches what we found. Can you spot it? The answer is B. The way they have it is a little bit backwards from us, but x plus 1 times x minus 5, x plus 1, x minus 5, x minus 2 times x minus 5, x minus 2, x minus 5. Number 40. The graph of the rational function k has a hole at x equals 3 and a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. Which of the following could be k? A hole at x equals 3 means a factor of x minus 3 in the denominator that is canceled out by a factor in the numerator. So a is possible. So this x minus 3 is not canceled out, so the answer cannot be b. This x minus 3 is canceled out, so c is possible. Uh, D does not have an x minus 3 in the denominator at all, so D cannot be the answer. So it's between A and C so far. A vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2 means there must be a factor of x plus 2 in the denominator that is not canceled out by anything. So I see a factor of x plus 2 right here that is not canceled out, so the answer might be A. Uh, this one has no factor of x plus 2 in the denominator. So the answer is not C, and the answer is A. 41. Let g of x equal this expression. Which of the following statements about g is correct? I see that all of the options are about where the vertical asymptote is and where the horizontal asymptote is. So let's just figure that out and then compared to the answer. A vertical asymptote will come from a factor in the denominator that is not canceled out by factors in the numerator. 
So we notice that there are two factors of x minus 2 in the denominator. There are three in the numerator. Because there are more factors in the numerator, then all of the factors of x minus 2 will get canceled out. Uh, there will be one leftover factor of x minus 2 in the numerator. But because all of the x minus 2 factors in the denominator are gone, then that means uh, we had a whole at x equals 2, not a vertical asymptote. So it must be the x plus 1 that gives us the vertical asymptote. Notice that this time we have four factors of x plus 1 in the denominator and only two factors in the numerator. That means after all the canceling is done, there will be leftover factors in the denominator. So this will give us a vertical asymptote. Specifically, the two factors in the numerator will cancel out two of the factors in the denominator, leaving two. But since there are remaining factors in the denominator, this does give us a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one. Now let's find the horizontal asymptote. We get a horizontal asymptote when the end behavior is a constant. So let's consider the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x. As x approaches infinity, only the leading term of each factor is going to matter. So we are just going to have x to the third power, x squared, over x squared, x to the fourth power, which simplifies to x to the fifth power, over x to the sixth power. Uh, notice that we add these. From here we could use a rule that we have memorized that says when the degree of the denominator is greater, there will always be a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Or we could keep going and figure this out without a rule. This expression simplifies to one over x. As x approaches infinity, the denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so the value of the fraction gets smaller and smaller and smaller, closer and closer to zero. So that's the end behavior, and uh, that means we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Now let's look at the options. So vertical asymptote at x equals negative one. Uh, nope. Okay, so far so good. Vertical asymptote x equals negative one. Horizontal asymptote, y equals 2. Nope. x equals 2. Nope. Vertical asymptote, x equals negative 1. And a horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. The answer is D. 42. Let h of x equal this expression. Which of the following statements about the graph of h is correct? And we have a bunch of statements about a horizontal asymptote. So this is a strange way of writing a function. Um, we're used to seeing factored form, okay, like we saw in number 41. Notice that there's no plus or minus in here. So um, we don't see this very often. And when we do, we need to expand this binomial to figure out what's really going on. In a previous video, we learned how to expand a binomial like this using Pascal's triangle. Don't forget that the very top number, I hesitate to say row, is the a plus b to the zero power row. And then it goes one, two, three, on down from there. So this row right here is for a plus b to the fifth power. And that's the situation that we are in. So I will use these coefficients. So here are the coefficients that I just copied off of this row right here. And we have learned that you take the first little uh, term and you start on the left. This is the left term, so you start on the left using the power that you see. So this would be x to the fifth power, x to the fourth power, x to the third power, x squared, x, and then nothing. And then you take the negative two, you know, the, the term on the right, and you start that off on the right. So this would be negative two to the fifth power, 
and then negative 2 to the fourth power, negative 2 to the third power, negative 2 squared, negative 2, and then nothing. So this is the expanded form of x minus 2 to the fifth power. Um, I could clean this up a little bit. I guess these numbers are small enough. I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. So, um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead now and show this binomial expanded and then minus x to the fifth power. So I'm going to do all of that in one step. I think I'll change colors for no reason at all. So this is going to be x minus 2 to the fifth power minus x to the fifth power, the numerator. So I'm simplifying this so I get x to the fifth power. Uh, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. So we have negative 10, not 16. Negative 10 x to the fourth power. Um, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 10 is 40. So we have 40 x to the third power. Negative 2 to the third power is negative 8. When you raise a negative number to an odd power, the negative stays on it. So negative 8 times 10 is negative 80. So we'll put minus 80 x squared. Negative 2 to the fourth power is positive 16. When you raise a negative number to an even power, the negative goes away. Um, so that's 16 times 5 is 80. So this is plus 80 x and negative 2 to the fifth power is negative 32. So minus 32. So all of this is x minus 2 to the fifth power. But then we have minus x to the fifth power. So minus x to the fifth power, all that's going to do is cancel out the x to the fifth power from the front. Remember, we are looking for the horizontal asymptote. That will come from the end behavior, which is the limit as x approaches infinity of h of x. This will depend only on the leading term. After canceling out the x to the fifth power, the leading term of the numerator will be negative 10 x to the fourth power. The leading term of the denom well, the only term of the denominator is 3 x to the fourth power. But we can see that the x to the fourth power will cancel out, leaving the constant negative 10 over 3. So guess what? That will be the horizontal asymptote, y equals negative 10 over 3. That's why the answer is d. Number 43, let r of x equal this expression. Which of the following values of x are zeros on the graph of r? To see what's going on, we need to factor the numerator and the denominator. In the denominator, I see that all terms have an x, so let's start by factoring out the extra x. So that will leave behind x squared minus 5x plus 6. Now let's factor the rest starting with the numerator. x squared is x times x. Now jump over to the 6. 6 will either factor as 2 times 3 or 1 times 6. Inner plus outer must equal the middle. The middle is a positive 1, so let's go with 2 times 3. To get a positive 1 middle, we need a negative 2x inner and a positive 3x outer. So that's done. Now how about this trinomial? x squared will factor as x times x. Oh, we have the 6 again. So uh, again, it was 2 times 3 or 1 times 6. Hmm. So we have to be extra careful here. Both of these can give us a 5. Um, so, for example, if we pick uh, 2 times 3, this makes 6. Um, to make a negative 5x, I think I'll show it this time. So, 
I always say inner plus outer equals middle. So when I say inner, I'm talking about the 2x. When I say outer, I'm talking about the 3x. To get this middle of negative 5x, we would need both of these to be negative. So that would mean a negative here and a negative here. All right, um, how can I be sure that this is the right choice? Well, this is the right choice because uh, we also need to check the sign of this constant. In other words, negative two times negative three is positive six. That's how I know this is the right answer. Uh, for example, okay, that's the answer, all right? I'm just showing you if we had gone with the one times six option. Uh, so we had x and x. Imagine that we did one times six. Inner, we have one x. Outer, we have six x. In order to get the negative five, um, we would need a positive one x and a negative 6x. So that would turn into a plus here and a minus here. Notice that we are getting the middle, right? These do make negative 5x. So I need to impress upon you that this is not enough. We need to make sure that we are getting the correct sign of the constant. And if we chose wrong, then we would have positive 1 times negative 6 would give you a negative 6, which is wrong. So that's how we know this is wrong. Remember, the question was, which of the following values of x are zeros on the graph of r? Zeros come from factors in the numerator that do not cancel out. So do not accidentally say that the uh, zeros will be x equals 2 and x equals negative 3. That's wrong. Uh, because the x minus 2 cancels out, this is a whole and not a zero. It can't be a whole and an x-intercept. See what I'm saying? So um, the only zero is at x equals negative three. So that's why the answer is B. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.